Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. There is a tremendous amount that I would like to accomplish today, folks. So hopefully we're gonna be diving right into it and accomplishing most of it because I'm gonna be honest with myself. We're not gonna be accomplishing all of it. That's how it always goes. So let's be real, right? Uh, but no, I've got some big plans. There's a lot of stuff that has been kind of sitting around for a while and it continues to do so. And I'm hoping to touch on some of that stuff. Uh, as well as some of the stuff that we talked about during the uh, previous session that I said I might want to do in this uh, coming session. Uh, I took a look at some of your uh, comments as well, rather, took a look at all your comments. This time I actually had the opportunity as well to go through and do my kind of second run through of comments too. Uh, things are starting to stabilize a little bit, so I'm glad I was able to do that. And there are a lot of things that I want to tackle uh, from, uh, from the comments as well with regards to reminders that I got, because there was a lot of stuff that sort of started to uh, slip through the cracks here and there, especially uh last session uh, as some of you pointed out while i was looking at the uh, cheetah fun facts uh there were a couple of issues that cropped up that i would like to uh sort of tackle right off the bat and make sure it doesn't slip my mind as we uh, go on with this session and then we're going to go ahead and dive into a uh, time lapse and then after the time lapse we'll have a bit of management as well is that's my plan right now there is a slight chance that we'll actually have a prolonged time lapse today and so not as much management on the tail end. I mentioned a couple of sessions ago, it feels like a month ago now, uh, but that will be something I'll maybe explore from time to time. I don't know for sure if we'll do that today, uh, but we'll see how the time lapse goes and how management stuff goes and, and how things feel. And uh, I'll be sort of making a call live as we as we go along. But for now, the plan is a little bit of management work right off the bat, our time lapse, and then back to management after the time lapse as well. Unfortunately, some bad news. I think this is the first time we've actually seen this notification, I, I think at least. Community challenge failed. A helping hand. Unfortunately, last week's community challenge wasn't successful. Now, that's really unfortunate, but hey, what are you going to do? I've I've belabored this point, so I will not belabor it any further, but it was a tough challenge. It's, uh, it's reassuring to see that many of you in the comments agree with my assessment as well, that yeah, it's a bit of a tougher challenge. Um, I do think these challenges are built to promote different kinds of playstyles and different kinds of approaches. Uh, I would say that this particular one um, is asking, is is trying to uh, increase uh, longevity of play. Uh, what happens is, if I understand it correctly, based on my understanding of the game systems, but also on... So look at this view. That's <laughs> so many llamas. Uh, but yeah, based on the, my understanding of the game systems and some of the comments from last session as well, star rating of an animal is determined by how long they've been uh, sort of actively in the zoo, how popular they are among your guests. So it's a result of, you know, how happy they are, how popular, popular sorry, the uh, enclosure is and that kind of stuff. Uh, all that comes together. So I feel like this challenge was to try and get uh, players to uh, play for like prolonged periods um, to try and get those star ratings up uh, as opposed to... Um, when it's like, you know, trade or, or sell or breed X number of gold rated animals, so like silver, bronze, silver, gold, uh, that's more about uh, a challenge for like getting players to try and play around with the breeding stuff. I mean, again, that's just uh, how I sort of read into it. I might be mistaken. Obviously, it could just be picked out of a hat for all I know. But uh, that's certainly what it felt like is that they were uh, trying to promote uh, longevity. That, of course, doesn't work perfectly for uh, us because I do like to record everything I play. Um, I feel like it makes us all sort of, it's more of a, uh, a community kind of thing that way. Whereas if I were to do things on the side and come back and be like, oh, by the way, I, I did these things. It just doesn't feel as, uh, involved or as personal. Uh, that's, that's my opinion. At least it's my two cents. Uh, I guess, uh, let me know if you feel otherwise. Do I want to spin these around actually? Hmm. That might be something I want to do. Now that I think about it, give the, uh, give the bonobos and the chimp. It's a uh, ledge to climb onto. That could be interesting. It would stick out a bit, but that could be interesting. Mm, might be worth. Uh, might not be worth the trouble. But anyway, yeah. So that 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 kind of a challenge obviously doesn't work for us, and then for I'm sure many people out there as well. It's just like, well, I'm too busy to dedicate that much time to. Uh, again, let's be real. Honestly, uh, it's a game that's over a year and a half old now. November of 2019, it came out, if I recall correctly, right? So. Uh, not everybody is still playing as much, or if they're playing, they're you know, dropping by for an hour or two here or there, and then stopping playing for the day or for the week. So it's a tougher challenge to fulfill. It's cool to have tougher challenges. That one was just a little too tough. 74%, not even three quarters of the way done. Just just barely short of, but that was a tough challenge. Maybe give some more time for a tough challenge like this, because I, I do appreciate a tough challenge. 
but I feel like there was something off over here. One too many variables to fulfill, and uh, and just not enough time, I think at least. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I, I do know some of you agree at least. Uh, let's go ahead and collect all of our unclaimed rewards, if there are any. Because, you know, we, we did a decent bit as far as our part is concerned. I know many of you uh, did a decent bit as well. Some of you were mentioning in the comments. And I think that's the part that's most unfortunate is like this is a risk that you take as a player is you're like, you know, we've 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 set free many animals now that, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have minded keeping a, a hold of. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, anyway, moving on from that, let's go ahead and very quickly some of the things that have slipped my mind again thank you all very much it's like my mind basically goes 100 miles a minute when i'm uh, playing planet zoo on pause as it is so when i'm actually playing and i've got 100 alerts popping up about some animal you know that decided to take a step to the left or a warthog that decided to teleport through the glass uh some of that stuff will slip by me and it'll cause me to forget my train of thought which is exactly what happened over here for example africa west i think would be the most appropriate where, 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 I'm, I'm so like law there there we go why is this not showing up there's two enclosures here got you but what about I've got the door here but I don't actually have the barrier interesting by the way throwing it out there i have name suggestions for the cheetahs and the bonobos but not yet one for the chimpanzees unless i uh unless i missed it so if you do have a name suggestion for the chimpanzees uh feel free to drop it in the comments down below and i will scoop it up uh so i can get all three of those guys kind of named at the same time is is what i'm thinking slash hoping uh but yeah don't hesitate to leave any uh suggestions down below 46 47 48 what are you 47. So it has been included, but for some reason the actual shape of the barrier isn't highlighting in the work zone. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. As long as, long as it's been included. Um, but yeah, so let me know, you know your name suggestions. I'll, I'll double check older comments, but I'm pretty sure... I mean, maybe I've missed something, uh, and I'll double check. But uh, but if you have one, if I have missed yours, then please forgive me and, and don't hesitate to, uh, to reiterate in the comments of this episode. Uh, now, over here, we have a bit of an issue as well, and that comes with my timing, unfortunately. Well, a couple of things. For one... The babies that were just had, all of them, that is a huge litter. That is really unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. Oh man. That, this, this bums me out, I'm not gonna lie. This bums me out. That really sucks. Um, so this latest litter is the result of inbreeding, and it's inbreeding that happened when I was uh, looking at the cheetahs, fun facts. And the reason why the inbreeding happened is because our uh, before our new male was able to arrive and become the alpha, uh, one of the older, um, one of the prior males became the alpha. And uh, yeah, that's a problem obviously. So let's go ahead and actually get all of these older males. Get who our latest one is. Is Henry our newest one? Let me check our trade log, I suppose. Henry is our newest one, yeah. So Henry gets to stay, but Arlo, Noah, you two. Yep, need to be moved. Well, I need to uh, storage, actually. And then, uh, and then the alpha relationship should change. Henry should become the alpha, and then we can bring those guys back in. And that'll prevent any future inbreeding. That really is unfortunate. Ah, that's such a big, such a big litter too. That's, 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 that's really unfortunate. Uh, let's take a look though on the topic of dogs on this, uh, dog walk of ours, as it were. Take a look as well at the painted dogs over here. Cause I do think we need to do something about this. They're all infertile. One of them's using contraception. But otherwise they're basically all infertile, like a baby. Yeah, this is, uh, not ideal. We, let's go ahead and swap them out, I think. Don't know what'll happen if I bring in. Let me check your Zoopedia entry real quick. Zoopedia. What is the deal here? 27 males, 9 females. So we can get a new male female uh, pair and hope that they become the uh, the alphas. And the old, uh, old painted dogs can stick around as well. But we'll have at least a new pair. So over to animal trading. I'll go ahead and get the. Again, a little bit of. It's a little unfortunate that I, I let them get so old. 
And of course, only males are available. Well, Hussein, let's go ahead and adopt you. And we will wait until a female becomes available, I suppose. I wish you could, like, set up alerts. Like, I wish I could set up, like, a... Hey, let me know when a female, you know, painted dog becomes available so I can scoop them up. But I'll just have to remember that I need to do this. And again, hopefully my, uh, my trains of thoughts don't get uh, all shattered, taken off, uh, well, derailed, I guess, technically. Um, over here, with the capuchin, it was pointed out to me that I think one of the capuchin is actually still on contraceptives, which we don't need anymore. No, oh, pregnant. Uh, let's see, actually, compare mates. I believe... Nope. 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 Not on contraceptives. Nope. 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 And... Nope. No one's on contraceptives over here. So hopefully, I mean, we already have two pregnancies, right? So hopefully we're going to see lots of little baby capuchin very, very soon. We have one pregnancy. Yeah, two pregnancies. Okay, good, good, good. You're thirsty and expecting officers. So three pregnancies. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, we're looking good. All right, awesome. So that'll be good. Uh, apart from that, I think we could. Uh, I think we could dive into the time lapse, and by the time we're done the time lapse, hopefully there will be some African painted dogs that we can uh, scoop up. Let me check here real quick. Yeah, nothing yet. Nothing yet. We'll have to, of course, keep our eye on and remember to bring back our dingoes as well once the uh, dingo alpha assignment has been uh, has been completed. But anyway, folks, that is for, uh, I think, after the time lapse. Right now, we're going to go ahead and dive into it. We're going to get some work done, hopefully. I mean, primarily, my goal is to finish uh, this space off. There's a lot of moving parts that still need to be put in. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I might adjust the, uh, the, the train, the rivers, and stuff like that as well. Um, it's been suggested that I get rid of this river and only keep the north-south separator. I might do that. I might just kind of shrink its uh, reach a little bit. Uh, I, I like... I like what this does to the place because it also acts as a barrier. Well, except for, for our little hit over here. Um, oh, I guess the animation resets. Now he's rubbing his stomach over the water instead. Um, so I was getting at. Right. I might just I might just thin it down. I mean, they'll be able to jump it to cross it, I guess, is still a problem. I just, I kind of like how it looks is the other thing. And it kind of hooks up to our uh, bigger kind of like waterway up over here. We could take a look at... I mean, I'm, again, I'm not concerned about the, the 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 cleaning of the water. And I guess the other thing as well is that I quite like how it um, looks like it leads into this waterfall. So there's a lot of reasons why I like that uh, this bit of river, but I might be able to thin it out a little bit or, or, or just otherwise make some more room for our uh, chimpanzees and our bonobos here because they, uh, they will need some, I think, at least a little bit more. But... With that said, yeah, this is my primary concern, and we'll maybe look around and, and work on some other stuff as well if uh, if time is kind to us, but we'll we'll see about that. Folks, on the topic of time, this time-lapse time. All right, folks, this time-lapse is certainly an interesting one, at least in my opinion. It was kind of surprising in how uh, challenging parts of it were. And uh, I'll, I'll touch more on this after the time lapse as well, so I don't want to belabor it too much right now. But there, there are some sections of this uh, enclosure that I just can't quite like, like figure out, I guess. And I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a bit of a wall with, uh, with how to execute a certain area, without, um, well, rather, I'm, I'm hitting a wall with regards to how to execute a certain area. Uh, with the pieces that are available to me and with the aesthetic that I've established in the area. Because I, I quite like how the space looks and how it feels and all that kind of stuff is great. But there's a section that I'm struggling with and I'll, I'll touch on that after the uh, the time lapse. So I'll, I'll leave that for future past party elite, whatever. Um, first order of business in this time lapse though was to actually flip around all of the uh, wall sections over here. I don't know if they will actually use the ledge how I would like them to. Uh, but it's a nice idea, I thought, and I uh, actually extended the uh, platform over here as well to try and encourage them to use it a bit more as well and give them more room to kind of run around, basically give them a second floor to their houses so that they're able to uh, have some more, well, yeah, uh, traversable area, basically. I also decided to build a bit of a, uh, I guess, a set of monkey bars is the way to put it. Uh, not, like, not... Not your traditional, you know, like raising on both sides or straight across. Something a little different, obviously. But um, hopefully they'll use it. I don't know if this is uh, 
if these are, are big enough. I mean, when you select the piece itself, it does say they're tagged for bonobos and chimpanzees, which would imply they're able to use it. Uh, I can't recall now if we actually see that happen after the time lapse. And uh, whether we do or don't, the question is still in my mind of like, well, will they actually use it? They won't use it to swing because I'm pretty sure there aren't any swinging animations. So that's a bit of a bummer, but, uh, but you know, whatever. We can, you know, theater of the mind it. Uh, over here, we are also extending their, uh, their platform over here. Uh, I saw an interesting comment, actually. I don't know if it was last session or the session before now, but I saw an interesting comment that was just like, does Party not like um, making... Uh, like uh, climbing platforms and stuff. I do. I actually do quite enjoy them. I mean, uh, never forget the uh, their treehouse for our uh, Bengal tigers at Leetsu North. Um, I do enjoy making them, but I think uh, I was maybe being uh, overly cautious uh, with this area or or something. Uh, I wanted it to be a bit less uh, built up looking as well, I guess. So there were a couple of things that I was like t tackling, I guess is the right word. I don't want to say struggling with. I was tackling. Uh, in my head with regards to how I wanted the space to be. But uh, no, 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 I do enjoy making uh, climbing platforms and, and trying to get inventive with them and stuff as well. Uh, again, case in point is the uh, the, the treehouse for our uh, Bengal tiger. Uh, but yeah, pretty pleased with uh, how, you know, these very like sort of seemingly minor extensions at least give the space a bit more uh, life, a bit more depth, a bit more dimensionality. So I'm definitely pleased with that. And I'm also going to actually uh, fix, uh, fix some of the alignments along the edges. And you can see me zooming out from time to time and trying to solve the problem I keep uh, talking about, or that I keep alluding to that I'll talk about more afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 it's kind of funny. I've not been, I've not felt this stumped about an area in a very long time, maybe even ever. There, there are times where I'm just like, I just don't know how to execute this area, or I just don't know what to do in this space. Uh, but, uh, this is the longest that that feeling has lasted. And it's kind of interesting. I had to, I had to figure something out about that. Uh, but yeah, overall, again, just putting them, putting on some like rocks and stuff, sealing off the, uh, um, the, the, the underside of the path because it looked kind of ugly. Didn't want to do it on the chimpanzee side though, of course, because I want to make sure people on the boat ride are able to, uh, see the chimpanzees. And it's actually been brought up in the past and I'm not sure if it works, but apparently if you put donation bins right outside, like the exit of a ride, if people had a good time, they will leave a donation behind. Uh, I actually haven't tested that. But I was looking up some uh, some old comments, and that was something that got brought up. And I'm just I'm not sure if that is the case. And if it is the case, maybe I should go around and, and do that because some of our rides are pretty fantastic. I gotta say, they're cheap rides. You see a lot of cool stuff, and um, you know if if they're if if you feel like you got your value for money, then you might drop a donation. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think we really need more money. To be perfectly honest, we're over four million, so we're fine. But Something to think about, especially for people who are just starting up their zoos and, and need to find ways to, 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 to make money in those early stages. Um, something to maybe test. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, but yeah, so this is something that was a little frustrating. So on that one side, got that nice smooth angle going, and I'm really happy with how it looks. Like I'm really pleased with how it looks compared to the stepped look. But then I try to like recreate that over here, where of course we have a curve going on as well. And see, this is where scaling is so important it's so important to have scaling as an option because if i was just able to squeeze this a little bit in like various directions depending on which you know section you're looking at i could 100 percent without a shadow of a doubt make this work but because scaling isn't an option neither is making it work so instead and i, I don't like doing this but instead what i have to do here is i have to kind of like put a tree down and i go yeah okay sure we'll say that the architect had to like leave a gap there for the branches or something. It was, I had, it was either that or undo something that I'm really quite pleased with on the other side. Now over here again, I, I hit the same issue where if I could just scale things, I would be able to uh, pull off what I wanted to pull off. I was really hoping to make these like, um, like monitors up high or something. This one's a little too high, I'll be honest. I wasn't really happy with the height of it, but I was like, oh, I'll sort that out later on. But I wanted to make a little encasing for it, and I just couldn't get the pieces that I wanted. And I'm sure, rather, not just I'm sure, I'm like I'm I'm sure, you know, like I'm I'm certain that if I was able to scale some of those plaster pieces, I'd be able to pull off exactly what I wanted. Um, I don't know if it'll ever come. I don't know if the engine maybe can't handle it or something. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, as an example, like Prehistoric Kingdom, uh, from what I've seen, has that kind of scaling uh, with its with its pieces. And 
it makes a world of difference when you're able to do that. It's, yeah, it's a weird, it's a strange, I'm, I'm curious as to why it was left out because everything else is just like a gizmo in a, in a 3D, um, like 3D software. Except for, for the lack of scaling. Oh, by the way, I decided a little, feels like a little callback to our, uh, our croc dock back up at uh, Elitsu North. Where we have the education boards on either side to tell you what the difference is between the animals. So I've got that going uh, down at the, uh, uh, like at the, at the bridge area as well. Yeah, you can see that. Oh, I didn't realize how much uh, time I spent questioning my uh, my approach to this corner over here. It was, again, and, and you can see me kind of like taking on all the small, like, like, these are important things as well, in my opinion, getting the textures and stuff right, but they were definitely ways for me to like jog my brain and like get it to like come up with an idea. I was, I was definitely, I'm, I'm still definitely struggling on that far uh, corner side, but over here, at least I was glad to be able to kind of put this down. I was like, yeah, why don't we go ahead and extend this hallway a bit more? Uh, and I might want to figure out a, something a bit more interesting in this corner. Uh, but for now I was like, let's add some more green. Let's add some more vegetation. Just, you know, get, get some more like variety in the space. Maybe break up this like sandy texture and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I do think it, it works quite nicely. It, it adds some uh, volume to the space, not just with like these giant skibola bushes, but also the um, you know bird's nest and the uh, just the flowers and everything else that we put down as well. It just adds some more layers. It just gives it some more depth. It just gives everything some more, uh, again, yeah, dimensionality, some more volume. It's more interesting to look at. Now, how often will we look at this space? I mean, for the next, you know, five, six, seven seconds, perhaps, but, uh, but never again, maybe. But still, it's uh, nice to um, nice to actually build spaces, right? It's not just about one pretty piece. It's about looking at the whole thing all together afterwards. This is something I was really pleased with, actually. It just kind of like came to my mind randomly. I was like, what if I put some vines down? What does it look like from the inside of the hall? And hey, it actually looks pretty good. So that works out. This is another example of where I was just like, uh, this, this, this time lapse really embodies the struggle of like, Trying to make pieces work, at least for me. Uh, I'm sure there are others who are really good at it and, and, and have, a, have a fantastically smooth time with it, but for me it can be a struggle sometimes. And my solution here ends up working, but it doesn't feel ideal, you know? And I guess knowing that it's not ideal is a part of what bothers me. Uh, it looks fine, but I feel like it could have been done more efficiently and it, uh, it kills me. <laughs> anyway, folks, that is the last touch for this time lapse. Overall, pretty well done with this space, except for that one little corner. I just got to figure that out. I'll spend some time figuring it out after we put some more of these vines and stuff down, though. But uh, overall, this is basically it for this time lapse, unless I have a surprise for myself. I do, right? I extended this as well. This was a longer time lapse than I expected, actually. But folks, I hope you enjoyed it. You had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. It does make a very big difference. But for now, back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse. And I got to be honest, that one was actually a little more challenging than expected. I thought I was going to breeze through that one. But uh, but no, there were uh, there were a couple of things I was kind of like banging my uh, my head against a wall with in particular and rather, I guess, quite literally this section over here. I just I don't I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with it, but I just cannot visualize how I want to seal this space off without doing this kind of a thing or uh, this kind of a thing. You know, I feel like I feel like it's going to end up just being that, just kind of like using that kind of a look to, to seal this space off. But I don't want to block off the view from the boat, so I don't want this to go all the way down. So like I'd have to use those wall pieces to kind of like push down this way and it would be suspended. So I feel like that might look a little weird unless I put a pillar down. But if I put a pillar down, really one of the only places where there are pillars that aren't uh, right next to a door. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really torn about this section. And it's it's weird because like you might have noticed a couple times during that time lapse. I'd like, you know, work on a spot, come back and like spend some time looking at this spot and just like mulling over it. And then I'd, I'd go work elsewhere and then come back over here again and see if inspiration struck me. And just like, nope, brick wall. I'm hitting it with with with. The tiniest of things. I don't know. I gotta figure it out. I gotta think about this a bit more. And uh, again, there's a few things that I'm taking into consideration. Right? I don't want, I don't want these guys to be able to climb up top. I don't want these guys to have the view blocked from uh, from the boat. I want to make sure these guys are still able to move over here. Uh, there's a couple of moving parts, and uh, it's making this section a real challenge. And it doesn't help 
that this uh, glass piece over here, I can't even, I really I really wish they would change this sooner rather than later. I want to be able to rotate the construction pieces in all directions. I don't know why you can't. Um, I see I see no reason for, for disallowing that. I guess it's just because of what's like the system's hard coded in the game. But if I were able, if I were able to do that, then I'd have you know this thing continue down over here and maybe even all the way around. But I, I can't do that, so that's not an option. But anyway, well that aside, we've uh, we've made some upgrades, some improvements to their overall play areas. We've made some improvements to um, the kinds of things they get to climb and, and and roam around in. So hopefully that'll make a difference. And we have also expanded the uh, the, uh, the 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 terrain itself as well. I'm hoping that they're not able to jump across. We'll have to test that to make sure they can't jump across. Um, between the enclosures, and we'll also want to make sure that, uh, this looks okay. I don't know, I might actually make this go a bit further out over here. You know what? There's actually a couple things, right, literally, literally, as I sat down to, uh, start recording, um, like, past the time lapse, I was like, wait, hang on a second, I just realized I forgot to do a couple things. So, um, we will be, oh, we will be sorting that out, uh, right off the bat over here to get her done, and then we'll, uh, then we'll come back to, uh, to, to then we'll hit play and, and we'll be off to the races. Oh, whoops. Wrong thing selected there. Obstructed. Yeah, not surprised. Because this terrain has dropped. Hmm, it's gonna be weird. Okay. Might explain why I didn't want to do this because there's the path and everything as well. Go up over here. Hmm. Yeah, this might have to stay as is just because of like the path and, and redoing the terrain and all that kind of stuff. Unless... Unless... Let's see. Nope. I don't think... Yeah. I think it kind of like dips down too low back over here and I can't lift this up because of the path. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. So I guess to stay as is because I'm not going to spend 17 hours repathing and reworking this thing. Uh, we might come back to it at a later point in time. But the other thing that actually slipped my mind was uh, speakers, education speakers. I put down all these education boards and I was like, all right, cool, fantastic. And I dusted off my hands. I was like, all right, we're done, moving on. Uh, no, we're not. I got to get these speakers on here. I don't know how it slipped my mind, but it just did. We have to be careful as well of overlaps, of course. There is the, uh, the gorilla speaker here as well. want to make sure that that doesn't... Uh, Compete. Five with you. Let's go with. Come on. Yeah, man. Oh. Five over here. We'll scooch this over a bit, I think. And that way we'll have room for uh, for both. And like that. Excellent. Again, for some guests in big groups, they'll consider that to be overlap. So, I mean, while I'm here, fine, I'll, I'll go ahead and tweak it so, so we don't have to deal with that. One speaker over here. Let's go and get another speaker over here. This one can be a bit louder as well. Cover both of these uh, monitors or uh, boards or whatever you want to call them. And let's get another speaker down over, hey, come on. over here. Decent spot, I think, for him. Want to make sure that there is minimal kind of crossover, basically. That's uh, not too bad, I don't think. Though, this board is for the chimps, isn't it? Good. And yeah, they look in different directions. That's that's how you can quickly tell them apart: is the the chimp and the bonobo uh, enclosure or uh, uh, education board images. They look in two different directions. Now I want to switch to. Western chimpanzee. Oh. And pop you down over here. Kind of awkward there. Let's go ahead and pull this out so it's out on one side at least. And got to adjust the volume here as well for sure. Looking okay overall. I don't want to get people, I don't want people getting a, an, an education on chimpanzees all the way out over here. You know, that's a little weird. A little bit closer makes sense, but all the way out over there doesn't make sense. Let's let's actually reduce it even further, and we'll put another speaker down on this end. Is what I'm thinking. If I can get to this. Drop you down a little bit. That's reasonable, I think. And then pop another one down over here. Then on the way up, if they're standing here, they're getting an education. 
Um, I do have a pair of education boards down here. There's a bit of a gap over here, I guess. So why don't we go ahead and pop you down over here. And on this side, you know what? We can actually pop you down. Not, not, not the person, but the board. Down over. I was worried about the angle. That's why I didn't do it uh, during the time lapse. But this means that we can get you duplicated and over to, let's say, roughly here. And his volume a little bit. I want to try and <laughs> I want to try and like hit this precisely. Up the volume here. There we go. Okay. Okay. Got both the uh, boards covered. And pop you down over here. You got to be about the Bonobo. And your volume. All right. You know what? That works. Sure. I'll take it. Might even actually drop this down to ten. And then crank this up to 10 as well. And I said, there we go. Cool. Yeah, that works out. Decent spread of education boards, decent spread of education uh, speakers. I think that's pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and hit play. Uh, keep an eye out for escaped animals like Aziza over here. Let's go ahead. And already been captured. Good, good, good. Oh, must have pressed O a couple times by mistake at some point. Uh, o is the uh, higher speed toggle. Um, but okay, so that's that. I do want to, of course, also keep an eye out for the other circumstances that we were tackling beforehand. Let's go ahead and take a look at animal trading. Let's take a look at our options here. It's okay. Yeah, all right. Not the greatest, but uh, you could say these stats are fine. You could say uh, it's okay. We go ahead and adopt you. And let's head on over to our raid center. It's okay. And Hussein, I'm going to go ahead and... I said it's okay and his so come on send you both for well, quarantine there you go and as far as our dingoes are concerned i don't know if we're ready yet to, to pull them out some of them are staying in here i think right where are we Have we received the new mail yet? Henry, you here? Yes, and you are the alpha? Okay, good. All right, so now we're safe to bring back our dingoes as well. So, Ario, Noah, ish, it'll hopefully be okay. Sophia, why are you, why are you in here? I can't remember for the life of me why I would have moved Sophia in here. Jackson, you as well? They might have been competing for alpha status previously. Jacob, let's get you back in here as well. Ben, you too. Yeah, if anyone can can remember why I would have moved all these guys over. It must have been because they were fighting for alpha status. Let's send them all to the zoo here. See what comes up. And uh, and, and if it is like a it is because they were fighting for alpha status, we can very quickly rectify that, of course. Uh, now, over to our vet research uh, as many of you pointed out there were some animals that uh, have not been assigned yet um the bonobo has been assigned the western chimpanzee has not been but now that the pygmy hippo is done we can go ahead and do that i wanted to make sure that uh, we still had uh people out there um like vets out there taking care of the animals so that if uh you know if, if there was disease out there then we, we were we were on the ball basically i didn't want to leave anybody uh you know un un uncovered in that way uh but let's go ahead and get becky jones now researching on the western chimpanzee and in the meanwhile we shall take a look at the pygmy hippos fun facts and hope that they are quite fun by the way i realized it was pointed out in the comments and, and i realized that uh with the uh, the cheetah fun facts i might have let me let me let me just really quickly over here distract myself again with the cheetah fun facts because that's uh that didn't do anything bad for us last time um I might have downplayed the impressiveness of fun fact number one. And I just want to reiterate that the only reason I said like, eh, okay, whatever, we all know cheetahs are fast, is because I'm 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 already I've I've already been uh, aware of this fact. And that that's all obviously what makes fun facts so uh difficult to make fun. Uh as somebody who likes to from time to time go randomly, hey, fun fact, whatever, 
a, a key part of, of, a, of a fun fact being fun, in my humble opinion, is the rarity of the fact as a piece of knowledge. And, uh, of course, if the recipient of said fun fact is familiar with the topic at hand, then they're less likely to find the fact fun if they already know what's going on. And that's what happened with the cheetahs. It's just like, okay, yeah, I know this. Yes, it's impressive. Zero to 60. Like, th th this is zero to 60 and three is, is, is no joke, right? I got some insane acceleration. The only reason it didn't take me by surprise is because I know this. Um, that's all, that's all. I, but I realized though, and I appreciate the comments that, that like go, that, that are kind of like, Hey, you're kind of downplaying how crazy this is. It's like, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I didn't mean to downplay the impressiveness of the cheetah's acceleration, uh, or, you know, top speed if I've ever done that. But it was, just, I was more making fun of the fact that, uh, that, that this like, yeah, cheetahs are fast. I know this, uh, but not everybody does obviously. Um, and, and that's unfair of me to, to, to not keep that in mind, I suppose. Uh, but over to the Pygmy Hippo now, let's see, ooh, these are, these are, these are meteor looking, uh, facts over here. Fun fact number one, the Pygmy Hippopotamus is approximately 20% of the size of the common hippopotamus. It also has less webbing between its toes to allow it to trek through rainforests. Ah. Listen. The second half of that is great. The first half, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I have them. I can see they're like a quarter of the size approximately, you know, <laughs> the second half of that is pretty interesting though. Also, is it just me or do these guys look like, these guys look like sausages, you know, like not, not exactly like sausages, but you get what I'm getting at, right? Like those, those like really short ones, like, like Longanisa is what's coming to mind. <laughs> Of course, this is how you how you welcome my uh, my comments. I, I don't even blame it. Well, there goes the appetite, I guess. Uh, back to the fun facts. Uh, Queen of... <gasps> no! No, not the Queen of Kenya! No! No, she's been with us for so long. I was ruining this day. It it, uh, it was only a matter of time that the, the Queen of Kenya is, is soon to leave us. A bad day for queens on this channel. Ironic, considering it's Victoria Day today. Just occurred to me. Is it time? Oh, it is time, isn't it? Oh man, that's sad. Oh man, why? Why? The Queen of Kenya. If we, if we wanted to, we could have preserved her by um, moving her to the trade center. Got some hungry animals, low welfare on the iguana. Well, that's because they're crowded and Aziza is in a box. Okay. Oh, right. That was the jump back after the escape. Right, right, right. Move you up there and let's go ahead and clean up the iguana closure here. Just a few too many of them. That's a problem. Whoa. Cheetahs are maturing as well. Atsi and Yolotli. Go ahead and send you to the trade center. There we go. We're getting old, so we gotta keep an eye out for that. Why are you hungry? Why why are you hungry? Are you not able to get to where you need to get to? Have I closed off your uh, enclosure too much? No, we should be fine. Lots more uh, room to run around and play and stuff as well. These guys as well. Oh yeah, good to see them actually using this uh, new space over here. Ooh, well, they're able to escape from up top over here. That was one of my concerns, is like how easily can they escape? How easily can they jump across over here? And pretty easily. Oh, is that what you're about to do? <laughs> oh god, that's terrifying. Look at that. Are you just standing over here chilling? I really want to see if he's going to make this jump happen. No, okay. I was, that looked like he was like gearing for a jump. Alright. He seems to be enjoying the new space. We're about to... Yes.
Yo, that was great. That I'm so glad we caught that. I was not expecting the the the, the feet to to come up like that. Oh, that was amazing. I'm glad he's having a good time. Did not care what anybody's opinion was. He's just flailing around. The uh, the 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 key to having a good time is uh, not caring what other people think. Um, but no, that was that was great. I'm so glad we stuck around for that. I was really I, I thought I was, I was like yeah, he's just gonna whatever play with his whatever. He's just gonna play the piano, whatever. It's no big deal. Or the keyboard, whatever. Um, I was not expecting the feet to come up. <laughs> that was uh, that was great. Now, is this escape? You know, the fact that they haven't escaped yet is interesting. You would have expected that to already uh, happen, but that did not happen. So cool. Maybe it's not something to be worried about. What's the deal here? Wait, what? No, it's not what I wanted. Was he over to here? That's so weird. I don't know why she got moved to... Must have been like the slightest mis misclick. It's so weird. Alright, let's go ahead and fix that. Go ahead and deal with our cheetah as well. As these guys mature, it becomes a problem. So let's go ahead and move you to the Trade Center. And go back to Penda and Iyapo. Alright, cool. And on the topic of going back, let's go back to our fun facts. Alright. Uh, yeah, the second half of this first fun fact, though, is is, is is good. I mean, it's just, uh, the first one is kind of like, well, I can kind of see that in the game. Uh, but nonetheless, less webbing between its toes allow it to trek through rainforests, as opposed to spend more time uh, in the water, I suppose. Fun fact number one, common hippopotami have their eyes on the top of their head, whereas pygmy hippopotami have their eyes on the side of their head. Fun fact number three. You can count, you, you can count, you can see it, you know? You can see it. Fun fact number three. The pygmy hippopotamus has muscular adaptations which allow it to close their nostrils and ears when submerging. Fun fact number four. As with its larger relative, the pygmy hippopotamus secretes a red protective liquid from its skin. Due to its color, it is sometimes referred to as blood sweat. This I still find interesting. So, cool, fine. <laughs> Fun fact number five. The pygmy hippopotamus is able to sleep underwater due to a special behavioral adaptation that causes it to automatically return to the surface when they need to breathe. That is a fun fact. I did not know that at all. Like, I would never have even imagined that. The auto surface. It's so, it's so cool, um, just like the way our brain works when we're asleep. Um... When I say our brain, I mean collectively living sentient beings. Just how our brains work when uh, when we're asleep. The kinds of things that we are, that we say alert for. The kinds of things that we do automatically. Like obviously we automatically, we breathe, you know, through the night. You don't have to consciously breathe at any point in time. Unless unless someone says, hey, do you, do you realize you never think about breathing? And then all of a sudden you become very conscious of your breathing and you're inhaling and you're exhaling. But outside of that... Um, you know, we, we, it's an involuntary action, right? Like your heart beating. You don't have to think about your heart beating. Um, though some people are able to control their heartbeats, but that's a whole other topic of conversation. Um, here's the trade center. The, uh, yeah, but, 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 but to, to be able to breathe through the night without having to think about it, relatively simple, like, action. You know what I mean? But to have the, the awareness to surface, like, there's a lot of, moving parts to that, you know what I mean? Why? Why can I not? You must be at the vet. No, you're still over here. The trade center. Let's go. You know what? Release you. My patience wears thin with buttons I don't click. Hungry animals. I mean, why are we not taking care of these guys? Do I need even more keepers right now? Oh, this guy's coming through right now with the food. There we go. Good, good, good. Okay, perfect. And Panya here has uh, escaped. Supposedly. We're okay. Um, but yeah, so th that's all that, that's kind of like interesting to me that they're able to, uh, obviously, I, like it makes sense. It's, you know, it's their natural habitats, their natural way of living. It, it all makes perfect sense, but it is still, just because something makes sense 
it doesn't mean it isn't fascinating. And it's just fascinating to me that the that their that the brain is able to go. It's time to breathe. It's not just a matter of inhaling or exhaling. It's let us surface. You know how deep are we? How high must we go? What in the brain triggers? Okay, we've broken the surface of the water, and now we can inhale. Right? Like that's like that's some. Those are some. You know. Relatively complex things to be aware of when you're asleep. I don't know. I've never like fallen asleep in the pool or anything, so I don't know. Maybe we're also extremely aware of our uh, relative, uh, you know, s submergence level when we're asleep. I have my doubts, though. I don't want to. I don't want to try and find out. I don't think anybody should try and find out. But uh, but yeah, I just think that's kind of interesting. Those are some decent. Those are some decent fun facts in there. The, uh, the red sweat one is particularly uh, compelling. Um, no, I've never seen that or anything. Unlike, unlike the size of a pygmy hippo, I've seen that. I've seen that they're smaller than their uh, counterparts. Wow, you're zipping back and forth, aren't you? Barely keep the camera on. Nice, about to have some offspring up over here. Things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. This, this was definitely something that had concerned me for a very long time. And it looks like the dingoes. I didn't see any warning about the dingoes fighting or anything like that, so we're good there. Uh, these jumps are looking kind of funny. Come on. Okay. Alright, you you do you. Have a... It's like when my camera is on them, they don't want to move around as much. Anyway, offspring imminence, that's good. Things are looking pretty good. More vet research complete. I'm assuming that'll be for the uh, Western chimpanzee. Okay, not what I was expecting, actually. Fair enough. So I guess they are the only thing that I'm currently researching. No, the bonobo as well. That's a lot of pips, actually. You know what I do need to do, though? I just realized. Zoo over to our animals. Just realized that food... Not everybody is getting grade 3 quality food, even though I've almost certainly researched it for nearly everybody. Obviously, not the newer animals, but grade 2 is at least better than grade 1. Go ahead and upgrade this. He does as well. Can I organize what? Yes, I can. Western chimpanzee, no option. The bonobo, no option. Everybody else is grade 3. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just occurred to me. I was like, hang on a second, hang on a second. With all those hungry animals. All right, pretty good. Hey, Papa Miracle, how's it going, buddy? The familiar names. Myself. And say hello to myself. It's like I bought myself a hat. Just helping the uh, franchise make its money, I guess. <laughs> or, or do you think I came in there and I was like, do you know, do you know who I am? Are you gonna charge me for this hat? No, I would never. I would never do that. Uh, but things are looking pretty good. I mean, wow, I'm like waiting. It's it's so like, it's like my anxiety is just like, when's the next red pop-up going to come up over here and, and tell me where to jump to? But things are looking pretty good. I mean, hey, got baby capuchin coming through. We have our dingoes uh, reorganized with a new alpha. We've got the uh, painted dogs in place. They're They're okay. Oh, what do we have here? Okay, education speaker not really overlapping because, you, again, that's how groups work. Yeah, things are looking okay. I mean, things are looking okay. Where is... What's his name? Henry? I was like, it's a very, it's a very, it's a, it's a name I'm very familiar with. I have a, I have a friend named Henry. Come, so it was just like when, when I scooped, scooped, uh, the dingo up, I thought that, and so now the name is, like, in my head. Yeah, you are the alpha, good. Those look like a healthy meal. Who's our alpha female? Oh, look at these little puppers, man. Oh, god. I really could just spend hours uh, with the... with the pups. I, I really wish alpha status showed up over here. I, I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Amelia, was it you? Yeah, it's you, yeah. Again, I remember reading Amelia's name in the comments with regards to her having, uh, inbred. Look at that pose. A little bit of stretching over here, but otherwise pretty good. They're so fun to look at. So happy. A little 
Happy doggo. All right. Good stuff, folks. They're happy. I'm happy because it looks like overall the zoo is pretty happy. These issues are... There we go. We're good. Those issues are, are, are non-issues. Again, it's just because a large group is walking between uh, two speakers that have some decent reach. But uh, hey, you know what? If anything, this feels like a good note to end today's session on. Things are actually working out smoothly. It's kind of wild to me. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do next. I've seen some requests for the uh, addition of some of the aquatic animals to the zoo uh, next. Again, we of course have the uh, the otter already. I've been re I've seen requests for the uh, penguin coming through, so that's definitely an option. I'm also thinking of doing the uh, expansions up over here. Right there are some more African animals, some more uh, sort of jungle-based, I should say, African animals that I would like to include up over here. And there's obviously some. Well, there's there's still lots of African animals, and there's also still a lot of their. Um, exhibits that I want to do as well. I got to plan something out for that, but uh, you know what? Things are looking pretty good. We've managed to, uh, I think, set ourselves up for uh, the next handful of episodes, at least of not having to overly worry about management. And so I think we'll once again dive into adding a couple of enclosures uh, in a row. I don't know what y'all think. What, do you, what, what, what would you like to see? Let me know in the comments down below as always. It does drive my decision-making process. Uh, we could make a giant indoor kind of a space for the penguin down over here. Uh, I could take a look at some other options uh, up over here. If you have any particular suggestions for uh, more jungle dwelling or forest dwelling uh, African animals, let me know. Or uh, more desert and plains dwellings one, dwelling ones will do over here. There's lots of animals to choose from. I just got to kind of like pick one out and start making plans and doing some research for it. But uh, I think I'm thinking either we add a new animal. And again, I'd love to know which one you're leaning towards. It's not like a vote per se. It's more just like for me to get a... A rough idea and then i'll make a decision based on that in my own uh you know headspace as well uh so either it's in it's it's between some of that or uh we go back to our uh koalas to try and work on this space a bit more because it is being left glaringly unfinished for it feels like what half a century now in game but anyway folks that is the end of the session i hope you enjoyed this one if you did you know what to do let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below again. And as always, it makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do, what I don't do, what I do more of, what I do less of. Again, you're all, you're all familiar with, with that by now, I'm, I'm almost certain. But anyway, folks, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.